Not too long ago, I did a video on how photonics is gonna change the internet. And if you're not familiar, photonics is the idea of using photons, as in light or lasers, to transmit data instead of electrons, as in electricity, like most of our current electronics use. And it's not as crazy as it sounds. If you've ever used fiber optic internet, that's photonics. Fiber-like pieces of glass that can carry light pulses down it super quickly. It's why fiber optic internet is just so much better than any of our other broadband options. Now in that video, which I'll link below if you wanna check it out in more detail, I got into the different ways these photonics can be used throughout our communications infrastructure and even inside our computers in varying degrees. But for this video, I was actually invited by NTT Research, who helped me make this video, to go to their Phi Lab in Sunnyvale, California to see a special crystal that they're using to make more of this all a reality. This crystal, which by the way, weighs a lot more than it looks like, is that material. It's called lithium niobate, and it actually has a pretty interesting history. The first ever crystal of lithium niobate was actually gifted by Bell Labs to Dr. Robert Beyer, who at the time was working on his PhD thesis at Stanford in the 60s. But before Dr. Beyer could get it from them, it actually fell and shattered. Now crystals have to be grown, and lithium niobate at the time was a new material that no one was very good at growing yet. Eventually though, Dr. Beyer ran into a material science faculty member at Stanford, Bob Feigelson, who said that he thought he could grow another crystal for Dr. Beyer in about a year. Thankfully, a year later, he grew this crystal, this actual one. It has survived for almost 60 years, and I will hand it back to them as soon as possible because I'm kind of terrified to drop it as well now. But using this piece of lithium niobate, they were able to build the first ever tunable laser. And actually during the growing of this crystal, they figured out a much more reliable way to grow lithium niobate. And the techniques that they pioneered during that are still being used today. So it was kind of a good thing that the first one shattered, I guess. Now the reason this material has been so prized over decades is because of its unique properties that include a high refractive index, a high degree of transparency, and a high second order non-linearity. But the really unique feature that solidified its use in the world of fiber optics and photonics was the fact that it exhibits Pockel's effect. Now this means that the material itself naturally responds to an electrical field in a directly proportionate way. So if you have a beam of light going through the crystal this way, and you put electrodes on either side of the crystal and pass electricity through it, the light beam itself changes in direct correlation. So as you adjust that electric field, the light continues to change again in a linear way. Now this means that we can use lithium niobate to take our normal electrical signals from say a current day computer and have it translate that electrical signal into a photonic one, just because we can calculate the exact differences that'll happen to the light when electricity goes through this material. Because of this, it's a natural converter for electrical into photonic or optic signals. And because of that, it was the material used to help create the global fiber optics network, which is the backbone of the internet created in the 90s. But NTT Research here is actually bringing this material into an entirely new generation through a manufacturing breakthrough. Data center AI clusters are expected to grow 80 to 100 times according to data provided by Meta. And they think that's gonna need to happen in the next two to three years. Not 10 to 20, not five to 10, two to three. Meta says that a current cluster might have 256 elements or components to it, but in two years, that'll grow to 4,000. And while right now the clusters are transmitting data at about 200 to 400 gigabits per second, in two years, they'll need to be over one terabit per second. And this is something that thin film lithium niobate can potentially help in two big ways. TFLN, or TIFLN as it's sometimes called, is now the next step to utilizing this material in a way that combines the scalability of silicon with the inherent performance of lithium niobate. Essentially, NTT Research is now able to, for the very first time, manufacture lithium niobate on a nanometer scale, like we do currently for our electronics. So in the way we use silicon and metal circuitry to move electricity and electrons around on our current computer chips, NTT NTT Research could use lithium niobate and carve nanometer or smaller waveguides where light and photons can be sent down these channels to the various parts of the lithium niobate computer chip, for example. And unlike our current computer chips, the lithium niobate itself can also be used to make amplifiers, parametric oscillators, and very high speed modulators on this chip. There's no need to add other materials to build any of these components. This new type of potential photonic computer could be used to drastically shrink the number of components in these data centers, but also drastically increase the speed and energy efficiency as well. I think Dr. Beyer actually puts it well. 
Electrons are, have mass and they're slow. And uh, we work with electrons in our computers today and have a clock speed of about three gigahertz. And it's been at three gigahertz for 20 years. The only way you're going to get to 3,300 or a terahertz is to go to photons. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about making that leap in all aspects of the circuit that matter to the, where the information is being generated and transmitted through photons. And thin film lithium niobate modulators, or the things that translate the data center electronic signals into optical photonic ones to go over the fiber optic connections, are the fastest in the world. And they can be used to achieve these one terabit per second and higher speeds for the clusters in the data centers and beyond. And there you go. To learn more about what NTT Research is doing with lithium niobate, photonics, quantum computing, and a ton more, head to the link below. And thanks to NTT Research for helping make this video and for letting me check out their fascinating lab. Chinky bumps. Now crystals have to be, nope.